Well, good morning. So today I'm just going to talk about the conversation between Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, Jordan Peterson. And specifically, I'm just going to deep dive on this idea of existence of God, what is God? And honestly, it's really interesting because I'm going to talk about the limits of language and how the two of them might think they're talking about the same thing, but in reality, they're talking about two totally different concepts because they're words and the concepts they can share will sound and seem identical. But the concepts, the, the visual imagery, the, the, the truth that lies within our own brains are very unique to our, our, ourselves. So, welcome back to the podcast, where we deep dive into philosophical discussions and explore diverse perspectives on meaning and existence. Today, we're unpacking a recent discussion between Jordan Peterson and Vivek Ramaswamy on the concept of God. This conversation is timely and fascinating as it highlights how two prominent thinkers from different backgrounds approach this profound question. Now, both Peterson and Ramaswamy offer compelling views, but they come from distinct cultural and philosophical standpoints. Peterson, rooted in a Christian framework, sees God as a personal transcendent being with whom one can have a relationship. In contrast, Ramaswamy, from a Hindu perspective, views God through the lens of cosmic principles and a vast pantheon of deities. I don't know if I'd agree. I apologize on that last little line. Um, I'm being a little bombastic, but uh, I'll get to the true difference between them. That's what an external view would be. Here's where it gets intriguing. This dialogue vividly illustrates the principles of linguistic relativity and the tetralemma concepts that can help us understand why these perspectives differ so profoundly. So, segment one, linguistic relativity and cultural context. The ideas of Benjamin Worf came into play here. Worf suggested that our language shapes our perception of reality. In this case, the term God might sound similar in different languages and cultures, but its meaning is deeply influenced by the specific linguistic and cultural frameworks. For Peterson, God embodies a personal and moral dimension shaped by Christian teachings. For Ramaswamy, God represents a more abstract cosmic principle or a collection of deities influenced by Hindu philosophy. I mean, it depends on what type of Hindu uh, he is. I believe in the interview, uh, he's closer to a panentheist view that God infuses everything but again, I'm keeping it simple because I don't really know exactly what his beliefs are. I'm just going based on what he has said. This divergence shows that even though we use similar terms, our understanding of those terms can be drastically different depending on our linguistic and cultural backgrounds. It's a vivid demonstration of how Worf's ideas about language and perception are still relevant today. Now, I've explained this before that... Um, I've had this experience myself when I began um, uh, giving tours in a Buddhist museum slash temple slash uh, monastery. Um, they actually assumed I was approaching Buddhism from a Christian lens. So they assumed I was culturally inept. I, I'm just looking for a word. I just They assumed I wouldn't understand, same as they assumed I wouldn't be able to speak their language, even though I was able to pick it up pretty quickly. So this is a bias we have about our own uh, cultural milieu. And in reality, I was the opposite because uh, I had a friend who actually is Asian, but she's Western. So she came in like what they thought I was. She actually was seeing all of this from a Christian perspective because she was raised Korean and Christian. Not Christian, but raised but they assumed she would understand Buddhism more than I. But the reverse was true. In fact, I ended up getting vetted by uh, their tour guides from Taiwan and around and, and in America. And uh, they ended up having me do the tours even for visiting uh, delegates uh, from around the world. So this is this idea that we uh, can overcome this cultural barrier to language and understanding, but it takes work, right? So, on to the next. 
the tetralemma approach. Here we're getting into the, my own ideas. To navigate this complexity, I propose we use a tetralemma approach. In ancient Indian logic in India, it was called the Chetaskoti. In ancient Indian logic that refers or considers four possibilities. Instead of debating whether God exists in one definitive way, we can explore these four aspects. God as conceptualized. Different cultures. Let me start over because I apologize. I got interrupted by a car driving by. So the tetralemma approach. To navigate this complexity, I propose we use a tetralemma approach. An ancient Indian logic that considers four possibilities. Instead of debating whether God exists in one definitive way, we can explore these four aspects. God as conceptualized. Different cultures have different conceptualizations of God. Peterson and Ramaswamy's views are shaped by their perspective traditions, reflecting diverse ways of understanding the divine. God is symbolic. For many, God may not be a literal being, but a symbolic representation of ideas, values, or existential or existential questions. My apologies. God as phenomenal. The experience of God or the divine might be more about individual or collective experiences rather than objective reality. God as questionable. We might also consider the possibility that the literal existence of God is uncertain and the concept itself could be a profound construct rather than an absolute reality. By embracing this multifaceted approach, we can appreciate the richness of these diverse perspectives and engage in more meaningful dialogues about the divine might even call this um, spiritual agnosticism or religious agnosticism or even religionless religion, riffing off of uh, Bonhoeffer. So, section three. Positive solutions, positive solutions and a path forward. So how do we move forward positively in, in light of these insights? Here are a few suggestions. So to foster intercultural dialogue, encourage conversations that explore these different conceptualizations without trying to force a singular definition. This can help us understand each other's perspectives and find common ground. Promote dual coding. Recognize and utilize both verbal and visual elements in discussions about abstract concepts. This can help bridge gaps between different ways of understanding and make the conversation more inclusive. Expand educational approaches. Integrate theories like dual coding and linguistic, linguistic relativity into educational frameworks to better prepare individuals for complex cross-cultural discussions. This can help people develop a more nuanced understanding of diverse perspectives. So before I finish up, I'm actually just going to share uh, some examples that I gave when explaining Worf's uh, linguistic relativity and dual coding theory. It actually explains them both, as Paivio and Begg did in their uh, textbook, Psychology of Language. So let's picture three fruits, and three fruits that will give us almost the tetralemma of language. So the example of a visual alone, something that you see, not feel or taste or would be fruits, an orange. An orange is this idea of a visual representation, the color, maybe the shape, maybe the texture, but plain and simple, the color is the fruit, the fruit is the color. Watermelon, my lovely wife giving that as example, is the opposite. That is what it is. It's more of a descriptive, a verbal, uh, representation. And then pineapple being a combination of both, right? The pine is, it looked like a pine cone. And the apple, we often use apple as a placeholder for a fruit. Apple as an example, right? Pomme de terre in uh, French. Well, we're using apple again, but apple of the earth, right? So this old meaning that an apple can just represent uh, a fruiting body in a sense. So in conclusion, 
The discussion between Peterson and Ramaswamy highlights important differences in how we understand concepts like God. By applying the principles of linguistic relativity and the tetralemma, we can better appreciate these differences and engage in more meaningful and respectful dialogues. Let's use these insights to foster greater understanding and find common ground against our diverse perspectives. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and join the conversation. Leave a review if you can. And until next time, keep exploring and questioning.